Hello viewers, I'm SB and welcome back to Caves of Cud, where I think at this point it looks like we're just gonna have to we're just gonna have to tough it out. We're gonna have to go to Almond Porch and end up getting jumped by a bunch of S photolites, and we're just gonna survive, you know? Um, even in the situations that were most dire for Mithter. Mithter was able to survive getting leapt on by a bunch of a bunch of uh, S photolites, right? They never shocked us for more than like sixty something damage in a single turn, I think. I'm just remembering that the turn that killed us was definitely like a sixty. The t the turn that kind of killed us due to time shenanigans was like sixty damage, so. I don't know. I think we'll be okay. We have reasonable electric resist. I would love to find a rubber suit, but I don't know how we could make that like a, a, a thing that we could reliably do. I do think that we're going to ask for help. Uh, I would love it if you would come with me. Actually, I'm wondering if we'll be able to still learn Intimidate from him after doing it. Let's, let's learn Intimidate first. Seems like a useful thing to have. And then... I'm also gonna I'm gonna bring him along. Warden Indrix, Goat Folk Pariah. Pariah no more. Now we're gonna go back to the stilt and just go shopping real quick. I know, like, hey, let's let's ignore everything else we were doing and go back to the stilt is like a thing that I do a lot. But you know, it's a thing I do a lot because it's it's worth doing. There's a lot of cool stuff at the stilt. Uh oh. We accidentally discovered the scriptorium of a legendary scribe. Well, that's neat. We're gonna find him and maybe kill him. Hold, hold on, hold on, hold on. That looked like a book. Is that a book just in the water over there? It is, in fact, noticed to have migrated to the metamorphic. And that is a test tube? Huh. Just a file of ink. Well, I guess that makes sense for a scribe to have. I'll take this as well. Uh, there's nothing in that. How about this one? No. It is often the case, it seems like, that when you when you find the lair of a legendary craftsman, they have a bunch of empty chests laying around outside for some reason. Wait. Also, there is a shrine over here that we should probably actually look at. Uh, during an expedition around the Scholar's Republic of Cabal, driven off a cliff by nefarious antelopes. Oh, we've seen that story before. You know, the story with the cliff and the antelopes and the worms. It's incredible how Caves of Cud can make a thing like that start to feel mundane. It's just like, yeah, that's the kind of stuff that happens around here. Alright, Auto Explorer does not want to take us into the deep water. Without our consent. No, sorry, do not collect 4,000 drams of salty water. Please. Please, for the love of God. Okay, so we're gonna have to find our way to the stairs ourselves. I mean, there's a path up in the middle of the screen, but let's go around this way first. Well, you would think a scribe would be leery of making lair in a place that is so flooded. Right? Because, you know, how paper works. <laughs> You're probably familiar with paper. For the young people in the audience, uh, paper is what we used to... Uh, write things on before we had phones. When you th when you think of it, it's actually tremendously <laughs> it's tremendously wasteful. A lot, a lot of trees went to do a lot of real amateurish creative writing projects. Not that I would ever have have written anything amateurish, obviously. All right, time to go down. So, like, I I don't know, man. Is it is it crappy? that I'm already planning on just killing this guy to steal whatever books he might have on him? Yes. Objectively, yes. But if we were going to the stilt anyway, right? It just makes sense. Boy, we are tracking a lot of water into his stuff. A dream beard? That's like a, a relatively tough enemy, especially for this part of the world. It's like got a lot of health and he shoots... shoots uh, sleep gas and... Huh. A cubic foot, 50th edition. You know, it's been a little while since we've read one of these procedurally generated books. Uh, even more... Yeah, I probably don't actually want to carry all these files around. I don't care about that glow sphere. Whatever, I'll drop some of them. 
We'll pour all of the ink into... What is that? Oh, it's a juice sap. Okay. Ow! You take 20 damage from the juice sap's explosion? Why did why did it explode? You, you die over there. Nope. Huh. Those blow up, huh? I don't think that's always been true. What is that? Oh, a scrappable deposit box. Scrapable, probably? Metal slates partition the chrome carton into golden rectangles. Inside, artifacts await their planned abrasion and return to mineral form. Oh, it's a it's a deposit box for scrappables. Oh, something's happening here. Uh, the mysterious gunslinger was just murdered by a gunner knight templar and hired guard. Okay, so dude's guards are actually uh, relatively serious. It may not turn out to be trivial for us to kill him and take his books. A slender semi-automatic pistol. All right, we did not know how to build uh, semi-auto pistols before. Hey there, how you doing? That's our scribe. Just continue to look around for a moment here. Is this a real juice sap or no? This is a this is a hired juice sap guard. Is this a real juice sap? Yes, I'm gonna run away. Huh? His guard did not get in there at all. I assumed that that was gonna turn into an explosion thing and that like, oh, the juice sap disappeared right as I went to attack. Well, they seem to have this under control. It's kind of weird that, like, just at this moment... Stop. Lag root. Bad lag root. This is the moment where somehow all of the juice saps became active. How long have they been living down here? No conflicts at all, and then the second I step inside, all of a sudden it gets weird. Uh, well, I'm no longer lost. Here is some water for you. Grazing Hedonists, Succulents, and the Consortium of Phyta all hated that. Uh, the Consortium of Phyta is just going to hate me, you know, that's just how it is. Uh, here, I'll give you some secrets. And then we could demand secrets from him. I don't think I want to pay 51 reputation for a random book. Yeah, he does just have a bunch of books. That said, I don't think we've actually read Frivolous Lives. I don't know, man. It feels like we should just murder him. Doing so would probably get our Consortium of Fighter wrap up, and it will definitely, um, will definitely crash our merchant reputation. I kind of want to ask him for secrets. Our experience so far has been that people of the Merchant's Guild know where there are other merchants, but then again, how many, how many kinds of merchants am I actually going to care about at this point? Probably the answer is none. All right, let's um. I'm going to do it. We're going to do it. We're going to kill him. We're going to start by killing his guard. So I'm going to step over here. We're going to cook real quick. Uh, sorry, I didn't really, didn't really want to do that. I meant to choose ingredients. I'm just going to have some good old bear and beetle jerky. A hearty meal of bear jerky and also beetle jerky. And then we're going to grab our dude here, who is... I don't know why he's pulsing white and black. He doesn't seem to be afflicted by anything. Oh, he's inky. He got covered in ink. That's why. I would like to direct you to attack this target. Man, maybe I don't want to send him in first. I don't really like fighting in this tiny little hallway, is the thing. And that guy's got a gun, right? And we don't even know what kind of gun. <sighs> hey, friend. He also has an acid gas grenade. Feels like it might be a good idea to divest him of that <laughs> prior to combat. I'll just, yeah, I'll just give you some... Well, hold on. If I give him water, we're not going to be able to get the water back. If I give him something else, we can probably loot it off his body. So, I will trade you for this apparently extra carbide battle axe that I have for some reason. That's too much value. Uh, don't want to, I could just, we could just give him a gun. He has guns already. It's not gonna, not gonna make him any more dangerous in combat. Here, a bracelet. Because I don't want to, I don't want too much water to change hands, right? I'm looking for something that's actually close in value. Alright. Here's the thing. I'm a marauder, you know? Uh, you know what? I'm actually gonna, I'm gonna step in here, and I'm going to trigger the temporal fugue. Then we're gonna step up here. 
I'm the one right next to the guy? Yeah. And we're gonna kick it all off with a shield slam. I'm gonna prone him and then we're just gonna go nuts. Bam. That's okay. Is it hard to tell if we've decided to go nuts or not? Flurry. Okay, there it is. There's the go nuts. Uh, it seems to have teleported him away from me somehow. Okay, well, it's not, not much I can do about this. I am stuck. Oh, you know what I could do? I could... I could uh, make this wall live and then move past it. I did not think when we picked up the nano neuro thing, I did not necessarily think that it was going to be an object that we would come to rely on frequently. But it has been helpful. Alright, I am helping. Hold on, is this guy actually tough? No, he is very easy to kill. I will not bother to spend a cooldown on him. Oh dear! Oh, that's right, I violated the water ritual. Shoot. I forgot that that does a whole thing. Uh, that was good, though. That was worth doing. It may well have been worth violating the water ritual, honestly. Okay, so we got all the books. Claim she was intercepted by Seeker Enemy. That's a strange title for a thing. Okay, and here's the, uh, here's the dead man. Uh, we'll take his armor for our friend. I mean, we'll, yeah, we'll take all this stuff. So, these guns. I gotta remember that killing people that you've water ritualed with is a thing that people take fairly seriously. Uh, okay, that's... That's not super useful. Aha! An Eigen Rifle. Cannot, cannot learn how to make Eigen Rifle. Still, though, pretty, you're pretty eager to see that. Uh, pretty scary <laughs> to have accidentally challenged a man who was holding an Eigen Rifle. Do I think that we would generally benefit from having this equipped over... 12 penetration, 1d12 damage, versus 3 shots at 9 penetration with 1d10. The 12 penetration is going to, if I understand the math correctly, the 12 penetration is almost always going to cause at least one additional penetration. So... I think we'll keep using this for right now, just for its ability to spray down groups of things, but uh, we'll keep that Eigen Rifle ready. Ready to equip. Hey, Indrix. I have some stuff for you. Yeah, gotta remember, not a good idea to kill people after you water ritual them. This is definitely a thing I already knew. I just... I just plumb forgot, you know? Uh, here is a folded carbide longsword, which is a pretty good weapon. Maybe you will like to use this. I am not gonna give you a gun. Okay, did he equip... Yeah, he put on that armor. He likes his he likes his Fullerite two-handed axe. That's fine. If I gave him a different weapon and he started using it, I might take his axe from it and use it myself. So wait, hold on. We didn't look in the deposit box. Is there actually anything in there? There is a spray of brain. Well, we don't actually even need that because we have repeatable spray of brain. But I'll take it. Oh, my reputations, you guys. My reputations. They're all messed up. Alright, to the stilt. Actually, to the Dromad Caravans near the stilt. Tell me you have fresh inventory. I mean, he should, right? It's been a long time since we were back here. Uh, still looking for a grenade, right? We have still not found a Sleep Gas Grenade Mark II. Or Stun Gas? I honestly don't remember. You know, whatever that grenade is, we definitely still need it. Also, crocusins, I guess. Or poison-tipped spears, but something tells me we're not going to find those on a... on a merchant. Okay, nothing new. Let's go turn in some books. N no? I really don't want to attack... Why would that have been... I guess maybe there's a guy on the space that we would have entered through? And so it interpreted that as me attacking him, I guess? It's unclear. Alright, let's read some books. It's been a little while since we've just had a, a moment to read here. So, 
I am fairly sure we have never read Frivolous Lives. Frivolous Lives, being the foremost catalog of humanoid kings by the Bacata Utark. Oh, maybe we have read this. I didn't. I certainly don't remember it being called that. Uh, this record draws upon the notes and accounts of the constituents of the Consortium of Phyta, hearsay from those who observed the futile lives of the humanoid kings, and personal anecdotes of the kings themselves, who in their struggles to remain relevant beyond their seedling-like lifespans, managed to record some useful data. As a matter of convention, I date the reigns of the humanoid kings according to their chronolo uh, chronological distance from an event of paramount historical significance, namely the publication of these volumes. See, that part I remember. Yeah, Abram and Cairo, these are, I think these are... I think this is the book we read. It's been a little while. Okay, and then uh, we've definitely read the other yellow books here. On Humanoid Mimicry of Plants and Animals. We have read this, right? Oh yeah, this is just the book that ma that makes a uh, makes a case for the mechanic where if you look like something, it likes you better. All right, well let's read a little bit of procedurally generated text because it has been a while, and I'm very curious what. <laughs> Boy, by the fiftieth edition of a book, it must be it must be just completely flawless. This is sixty three pages. We will not, in fact, be reading the entire thing. Uh, it starts with stage direction, so it might it might be a play or it might be. It was just, like, very faithfully taken down from dictation. Must you disturb me? What are you, some sort of clock until now? Ozone is generated in the canticles chroma chromaic with reverberant gusto, gesturing emphatically with his brazen pose. It feels like you should not be carrying around... A lot of people carry the canticles chromaic around with them. It seems not ideal. The afflicted patient will suffer increasingly restricted movement as the cheeks flushed. That is all. Sounds like a very serious disease. They trace their lineages back to the temple erected in his honor and cocks his head in approval. The wake of the smaller fish. It's very judgmental. The whole mass is stitched to an extended magazine. There are some unoccupied spaces between the molecules. Do you bear his tidings in your heart? Come, share this peaceful space. In May 1896... Huh... My, my attention was particularly drawn to this charm. Who am I? Sven Leynard, eater of game, first huntsman of cud. That's a very, that's a wild name. What is the text? So all of this stuff comes from other text in the world, right? Not necessarily other books, but also like people's dialogue and stuff. What text has the phrase May 1896 in it? Crime and Punishment exists as a book. I think... You can't actually read Crime and Punishment, right? But maybe there are also other books? Other other books that are just, like, books from our world that have made it into the game? Hmm. Now that all this great expanse, solids are too maddening. Oh, praise the cassifescence which watches over mine. Mine being my solids, I guess? You know, that's pretty good. I would, I would maybe worship a god who watched over my solids. I take my solids very seriously. They're important to me. This motion of the dark foliage of Cud's prominent linguist cults have converged on a single shawl swaths her face and the most ancient trees. A heart icon indicates that your attack penetrates your target's armor. Take control of the authors. If the earth for their children's return to the great southern salt desert called Mogra Yi, a race of jungle dwellers. I love it when a book tells me uh, what kind of weapons I'm skilled with. It just happens into your life and lets you know. In case you weren't aware, you are skilled with long slashing blades. I am going to drop one of our Corpus Cholises, again, mostly out of laziness. I guess the other one's really not... They're just really not worth any XP, is the thing. Okay, it looks like we... Ooh, we do not have any books that are super valuable. Yeah, Frivolous Lives isn't too bad, and we do have three copies of it. I would swear that at some point we had a book, uh, more than one book even, that was worth 3,600 XP by itself. Alright, managed to level up. Just trying to make sure we're getting nice and strong here. So where are we at? We have 243 skill points, we have 6 mutation points. I should probably take a new mutation. 
Can you... Can you evolve? I'm trying to remember. Are there mutations that give electrical resist? There's definitely one that gives cold, uh, like a small amount of cold and heat resist. I don't know. We're gonna hit. We're gonna hit the new random mutation button. Show me something fun. Uh, confusion seems like a bad idea, given that it doesn't necessarily work. Beguiling, on the other hand, might be very good, and also we probably have the ego to support it. That said, too hard. It is also. Uh, obviously quite good. Being able to evolve to extra points of toughness seems like a pretty big deal. The quickness loss is something, but like this is just gonna, this is gonna give us a whole bunch of extra HP, right? Because I think your HP gain per level is modified by your toughness modifier. Although now that I'm saying that out loud, I'm realizing that I can't, I don't know why I think that. I might be making an assumption based on the fact that that's how it works in, in most role-playing games. You know what? We're gonna find out. You gained two hearted. It did. It did gain us like twenty five uh, HP. So actually, I feel pretty good about that. And then if we level it up, it just increases the um, yeah increases the chance that you regain some hit points each round when wounded. That seems fine. What else might we want to spend points on? A uh, very small chance to to days. This gives us a couple more rounds of knockout on our electromagnetic pulse. That's whatever. Even more chance to shake off negative status effects seems fine. Honestly, Mental Mirror 5 is probably more than we actually need. Seems like a pretty small benefit. Bestows the... Uh, unerringly identifies an artifact up to complexity tier 7. Bestows the ability to construct artifacts up to complexity tier 4. Oh, leveling this up gets us another copy. We, we hit a break point here. Yeah, let's definitely take that. And then... Uh, this would add three rounds to the duration. I'm just gonna hold on to our other mutation point. That was pretty significant, though. And I think we won't spend any skill points. Oh, I do want my, do want my copies of the corpus back. We can sell one of those. All right, let's take one more look around town here. Uh, this this guy has gloves, right? This guy has guns, though. Guns are exciting. Uh, nope, never mind. Changed my mind. Not that exciting. We already have such good guns. I do feel I feel a lot better at 207. I forgot that there was a mutation that gives toughness. It's definitely a good idea. Uh, okay, I don't think we need any of that stuff. Oh, wait. There was a, um... One of the Betels was, like, looking for a small amount of phase silk. Is that right? Uh, soul curds, soul curds as well. A splendid vestment. Four phase silk, six light obfuscating lenses. Okay. So we're still looking for sleep gas grenade mark two. Phase Silk and Soul Curd are also at least potentially possible. Oh, also, I forgot. Apothecaries can have Salve. That seems like a good idea. You know what? Sphinx Salt, also. Probably a thing worth taking. How would you like some weird garbage? Trust me, I have the weirdest garbage you will ever find. Uh, yeah, I'll sell you this. I'll, I'll take on the water. Okay, those seem definitely worth having. I'm a little less excited about Shade Oil. You know what? I might not be I might not be using my drugs as effectively as I could be. Okay, uh let's see here. Face silk, two servings. Hey. That is most of the way there, because I think we already have one. Yeah, I'll just give you the water straight up. That's fine. Right? Remarkably, you're not gonna believe it. I've already forgotten. Four phase silks. So yeah, I'm pretty sure we have three now. This is not one of the more exciting... Um, yeah, we have three. And we have one soul curd already. This is not one of the more exciting um, Betel offers, because like, I feel like I know what a splendid vestment is. I'm really curious about Enhanced Prowess. Uh, you have nothing, as always. How does that guy's shop even stay open? 
I guess people probably go through a lot of footwear here, um, especially if they drink a lot, because it, it's probably real easy to ruin your shoes in the in the bramble patch. Let's trade. Do you have no? Well, that's a shame. Can I eat from your oven? Apple petal tahini. Whenever you eat a dreadroot tuber or law petal, you heal. Okay. I mean, that's not horrible. We don't have a lot of spare dreadroot tubers and stuff. Oh, wait, this is just gloves. What am I doing? Wear gloves. Do it now. All right. Uh, that's a hookah place. I mean, we'll check the gun store. But my suspicion is that this guy could not even have anything that would be interesting to us. Except for boots. Hold on. This looks familiar. I think this guy's inventory is the same as the last time we were here. Has it really been such a short time that people haven't restocked? I guess I don't know what the restock timers are. Feels like the Dromad merchants restock pretty frequently. Maybe these guys do not do it quite so much. Hey, you. Uh, no phase silk, no soul curd. I wonder if... I wonder if a, a splendid vestment has any chance of being good for us relative to the pretty splendid vestment that we're already wearing. I will, in fact, take your soul curd. I just love curd. You know, is there anything better? A drop of nectar is remarkably valuable. Adds uncertain attribute-based effects to meals. Oh, this is eater's nectar. This is not just nectar. It is eater's nectar. I sort of want to get it. I'm a little curious about that. Oh, you know what? We could probably uh, find something that would give us a little bit of electrical resist, couldn't we? Damage reflection. I mean, I guess raw damage reflection would be fine. I'm trying to survive. Have we seen any food that that gives electrical resist? I don't know that we have. All right, let me trade you a data disk for all this. Or I guess... Hold on. I have weapons and stuff. Let's get rid of these, even though they are not terribly, um, not terribly heavy. And then I don't actually want... You know what? I'll give you... I'll give you 47 drams of water. That's fine. All right, we're getting we're getting close. We're getting close on some of these. It's sleep gas mark 2. Right? Not stun gas mark 2. Yes, sleep gas mark 2. Okay. There's so many different kinds of grenades that it's it's actually Kind of difficult to intentionally encounter any, uh, any one. Uh, let's trade. He has a weird artifact. That's exciting. He also has crystal boots. Do these give? They do give resist. And the boots we're wearing right now are just, like, I believe they're just normal steel boots. They're like two armor minus three. So I think this is a flat upgrade. We certainly have the, uh, the trade value to acquire such a thing. Should not be an issue. He has an Eigen rifle now. Is his is his gear just leveling up with my gear? He just, he just happens to be finding things that that are of a level appropriate to my desires. Uh, so let's trade him. Give him all the data discs. We will also give him. What else do I have that is kind of heavy? Uh, I have too many guns. I certainly don't need this laser pistol. I have an Eigen rifle now. Uh, I don't need either of these, although honestly we might be better off just disassembling those. And then obviously we have lots of um, we have lots of like gemstones and stuff. Those are not high on my high on my list of things to sell. Oh right, I need to condense the ink from those files and then probably throw the the files away. We certainly have an awful lot of empty liquid containers. Uh, I could trade him the taco. I kind of want to eat the taco. It's so valuable that I just, like, I feel like I have to eat it to find out what it does. Do you want a thermoelectric cell? Let's do that. This is how we'll do that. 
I will also pony up 37 drams of water. Okay, first things first. The weird artifact. Metamorphic polygel, which we actually know what that does now. Yeah, look at this, just basic ass steel boots. Get out of here with that. Chris steel boots all the way. Hey, Indrix, my dude, can you wear shoes? I realize I have no idea. Well, if you can, please enjoy these shoes. Compliments of your friend, me. Boy, what would I even... Well, let me, let me give this to him. What would I even polygel? Like, what do we have that it would make sense to do that with? I guess we could polygel our armor and then give it to... Give the extra copy to our friend to make him even tougher. That might be a good idea. But I feel like I want to. I feel like I want to save it for a really special occasion. Like if we find another one of those boxes that just deletes uh, enemies from the world or something like that. But I am also concerned that if I follow that logic, I'm going to end up in sort of a mega elixir kind of space with it. We'll hold on to it for right now. But we'll be on the active lookout for opportunities. Uh, these guys are just, these, these guys are specifically selling, like, wine and apples, right? Well, hey, let's just go over here and make sure they don't have any other food-related items. Nope, okay. Honestly, it might be worth it to pick up some cider. You know what? I think I will. Cider's actually pretty good to cook with. Uh, here. Have a copy of the Corpus Cholis. I don't know why this one is more valuable than the other one. We have these Ogre Ape hearts, and I don't know what to do with them, but I do know that they don't weigh anything, so... <laughs> I am inclined to sell other stuff. I think we've sold most of our, most of our things that are just, like, awkward weight. Uh... Files are basically not worth anything. We have some cider already. Still, though, I think it's I think it's good to, to buy more. Um, I don't want to just give you 100 drams of water. That seems a little much. Let, let's give him some grenades. I do not need fungicide grenades, Mark 1. I probably don't need a glitter grenade. Oh, it's rusted. Whatever, it's fine. Uh, what else don't we probably need? Honestly, thermal grenades seem kind of bad. They just don't start, they don't start an aggressive enough fire. And then, we have the recipes for all of these grenades, so we don't really need to hold on to anything, necessarily. Uh, I probably don't need two Mark I resonance grenades. Yeah, we'll do that. All right, let's let's uh, spend a moment here fixing our inventory, fixing our liquids situation. Uh, I'm gonna pour into another nearby container, just into a random water skin. We'll just have a water skin that is our ink skin. I don't know that we're ever gonna need ink, but we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and consolidate all of our ink. Who knows? We might we might happen upon a use for it, and if we do, won't we be glad we saved it? Plus, it's not like you could just go and find ink anywhere, right? This is a hot commodity. All right, I believe files have like a really low mass uh, maximum carrying capacity, right? So we could just drop those later. Uh, I will. I will hold on to them for right now. It would be better to sell them, right? Even though they will, they will just generate tiny, tiny amounts of value. Uh, what is this one? Okay. So that's just another wine place. That is a big empty tent. Hold on, aren't you the model of guy that throws poison tip spheres? Ooh, he is a little... You know, he's having a good time. You do not have any poison tip spears for me, though. Out. Just walked right onto that. Here we have a bookmaker. We could buy 
books from him. And I suppose just get a little bit of XP, although honestly, the trade value to XP conversion is gonna be pretty bad, you have to imagine. Alright, we do have some restocked inventories on this screen, apparently. Tell me... No, nothing. No face silk, no, uh, no thing. Well, that's just disappointing. What else is over here? Another gunsmith? I mean... I, let's let's check, right? Hey, what a surprise. Not really anything of value. Alright, so we're now at like... We are over 20 electrical resist. While also just being well outfitted. It's hard to be too upset about it. Um, I guess let's talk to this bookbinder. Although, it's hard to imagine we're going to want to buy anything. Yeah. There's another situation where it would be nice to be able to just, you know, murder them and steal all the books. Uh, okay. I've given him all of my secrets. Yeah, our reputations with everybody are all screwed up now, because I'm, cause I'm a horrible, marauding monster. I mean, it's listen, I'm not complaining. It's totally fair. <sighs> Alright. I suppose it is time... Let's just, let's just go and have the chat. I'm feeling pretty tough. We have a distraction. You know, Indrix is a secondary target for the, um... Is it a good idea to shoot that? I don't know. I'm just going to go off screen. Well, that didn't work the way I wanted it to. Uh, Indrix is a secondary target for the, uh, as photolites to focus on, which hopefully will be useful. And hopefully will not just result in his immediate death. Okay. There's my bearings. I found them. Apparently there are hostiles nearby. I don't know if I agree with that assessment. Let's just walk into this screen a little bit. Oh, there it is. There's the hostile. Apparently there are still... Yep, more turtles. Now can I go? Alright. Trying to be careful about the water, as always, spend as little time in the water space as possible. Because, you know, one time we found that Rhymewick. Okay, so what exactly is the wording on the quest? I want to make sure I'm doing this. Travel north to the spindle at Omen Porch. Take control of the grounds beneath the spindle. Okay, you cannot enter the space that has the spindle in it, so... Oh! This seems different... What's your deal? An Adi. Spindle glitter rained from heaven and sowed the holoptic valley of the Adi's eye. It sprouted gluttonous molecules that sucked the hue from the bug's head, chest, and wings. It unrendered the Adi and left it to flit from leaf to leaf, half blind and dirgeful. And also, extremely shot. So, so shot. Hey, where's, um, there he is. Indrix didn't feel the need to show up until after I had moved once. So what's going on with all this then? Statues of Eaters. That looks like a that looks like a dresser. Features erupt from a stone canvas and shatter into a figurine from the deep past. Hair, skin, brow, thigh. The details hatch a new emotion inside you, the sense of the strange familiar. As you move about the petrified likeness, you wonder at how this eater managed to incise themselves into your space-time braid. Man, the writing in this game, it's so like... I don't even know what to call this style, but it's so strongly the thing that it is. I I absolutely love it. That said, this is 100% a statue of a dresser. Like this little mirror part on top. So maybe the description not 100% relevant here. I assume these will all have the same... yeah. I mean, there's definitely some interesting stuff going on here. Like, this one over here seems to be a small, big-headed antelope of some kind, maybe? And uh, this one's just a space marine. You can't fool me, I've seen space marines before. Huh. Oh, also, I guess there's some more normal statuary around here. Shrine to Antirduct the third, the second, the, f the first. Oh, apparently that was a new story. Wait, wait a minute. Throughout the entirety of 6256BR, Antiriduct plundered all of the nomads' monarchy of Turkopir, 
soldering together the children of worms and hermits. Whoa! She became known as the Turk up your past. Do not solder together living things. I shouldn't, I feel like I shouldn't have to tell you that. Oh hey, that's a new secret about Reshef. In 1BR, the gyre widened, and the final plague afflicted the land. The Gersh Nephilim rose from their cradles on the moon stair and slouched toward Cud to eat its young. Reshef rose to meet them in battle and cast them back. I think that's something we had heard before, but apparently not during this character's life. Okay, well I'm sure that'll be an awful lot of XP when we, uh... Huh, that's a weird colored tree. Ah, an irritable palm. Let us not draw any closer. Okay, so there's just more statues of eaters around. I'm reluctant to wander off the path into the trees because some of the trees are quite irritable. Yo, this is real different. Okay, tr normal as photolites. This is way less dangerous than our, uh, our previous visit to Ezra. Am I allowed to go to Ezra? Is this is that okay? All right, lots of rocks. Oh, check it out. There's like a there's like a bar relief on the wall. A ruined mural of Antiridoc the Fourth. Tomb mural depicts a significant event from the life of the ancient Sultan Antiridoc the Fourth, but it's no longer legible. Okay, that's just a divider between two different murals. Yo, this is so cool. I really love the art. Like, the, the art here is so, like, evocative of the kind of scene that they're trying... Well, I mean, the scene that they're trying to evoke, right? Without it necessarily even having details, you can tell that this is one of those historical murals. You can see the landscape, and that's so cool. All right, we're, I'm not going to go talk to Ezra just yet. Let's go back and actually have a chat with, with Almond Porch, provided that he's cool with that. Y'all, can I... Am I allowed to just step... Okay, thank you. Welcome to Almond Porch, Traveler. Enjoy your visit to my earldom. Feast your eyes upon my tall and glorious spindle. Take in the scent of roasted musa. Uh, the Barathermites would love permission to lease control of the spindle, if we could do that. Oh, there's no simple price I can assign to such a thing. Were I to grant such a request, you would owe me a great debt. You and several of your allies. Yeah, how do I do that? Uh, okay. Send word to four of your allied factions. I don't think this character is all that well liked. Even before the water ritual thing. Yeah, um, convene the council then. Okay, come back when you're favored by four or more factions. Let's go look at the big factionometer. Apes? Apes favor you? So it's just anything that's green, right? The mechanimus? Cool. Got it. The wardens did before I took Indrix on. Okay, favor. So favor's like 250 then? We might be able to make this happen. Where, uh... The Villagers of Kashan. I wonder if we've been to Kashan yet. The Villagers of Kyakukya. Oh, we might be able to, um... Maybe we could do something there. Because we're pretty close. I can't remember. Did we... Did we give the mayor all of the secrets that we could? Who else is close? Dogs are close. Yo, dogs. We would definitely have been above with dogs if I had not murdered someone that I water ritualed with. I really, uh, really screwed up there. Uh, Alright, let's have a look around. It is clear to me that we will not be murdered for being here. Let's just see if we have, uh, if we have anything interesting to run into. In 99BR, Chef appointed Rebecca administrator of the Tinker's Theocracy of Har, which apparently is a thing we knew already. I'm a little disappointed. I thought that might have been new. Oh, what is this now? Is this this is the gate into the spire, I guess? The Death Gate. Patine have uh, transformed the Cyclopean bronze doors into great shelves of sea foam and coral. I have never seen the plural of Patina before. Uh, lyrical death is depicted on the panels in high relief. Chained cables lift inverted pyramids through a calcified village. Gaseous fire and vaults of brine. Skeleton harpists trapes across the frieze, and goats chew copper bones on the cornices. Is the goat the most intimidating animal that they could think of to uh, to sculpt in there? Ooh, what is that? Is that just another? Yeah, it's just another eater statue. Who knows what that's supposed to be? 
Okay, banana trees and stuff. Apparently trees that are not uh, not easy to walk past. A lot of just like random rubble. I mean, let's continue following the road to Ezra, right? Oh, hello. This is where they do all their farming. Are you Ezra? You're just a banana rancher. She maneuvers under a tunic made from sackcloth and braided goat hair. Her olive skin and straw hair glisten with spindle dust. Hey, is life not sweet? But could it be sweeter? It could. What if you just gave me all of your things? Let me tell you about the religion of enriching me. Okay, hold on. There's an oven here. It seems like we should eat goat in sweet leaf. Wow, six levels of psychometry. Huh. That's a powerful food. I don't know that it's actually good. And obviously we're going to look for opportunities to rob these people. I'm just going to uh, close this door right quick. I mean, they're not going to get mad at this, right? Surprisingly heavy. Mm. I'm going to I'm gonna elect not to take the things. We're still cool, right? Nobody's mad at me. I'm nervous. I'm nervous about pissing off people who are actually quite powerful. I mean, we know how the mechanics of this stuff have always worked for us in the past. It's probably okay to take the books, as long as the door is closed. Man, are these just are these just random flowers, or...? Yep. Petal-shaded arcs of nectarous secrets. That, right there. That's exactly what I was talking about. That's the cud writing style. They are just flowers, after all. Are you... Nope, you are six true. Oh joy, another meat being. Please tell me you're here to buy something. Uh, sorry, are you are you having a bad day? Is something the matter? Oh, I'm fine, fine. I simply adore being assigned this stinking backwater Musa Grove after decades of service, unceremoniously dumped in an office next to a fleshy tinker who works day and night making all manner of racket through the thinnest, most conductive walls ever crafted. And what is it you humans say? Living the dream? <laughs> yes, I am living the dream. I mean, it's close. He's a plant, so do plants not... They, maybe they don't sleep, so they don't dream? So he's not familiar with the, with the word? Uh, you're being a little bit rude, my dude. And you're being a bit annoying, so I suppose both of us have our burdens to bear. Perhaps we should do some trading and move on with our lives, hmm? Uh, okay, I'm... Let's... We're getting off on the wrong foot. We're getting off on the wrong tendril here. I'm Marugamet. You are? I am Six Shrew. A merchant from the Consortium of Phyta disinclined to waste their time on talkative strangers. I sell things, and you can buy them. I would in fact strongly encourage you to buy them, or to be on your way. And why are you called Sixtru? At this point, I'm talking to him just because he finds it annoying. Why are you called Pest? Well, I'm, I'm not. You are now? Are you going to buy something, Pest? Nah, I'm, I'm good. For real though, let's trade. It is weird that it's, it's, with most people, you can only enter the trade menu from the root of the conversation. Most of the time, it doesn't seem s that strange. It's just kind of like a, a weird thing. But here in particular, it does seem odd because he's specifically suggesting to you that you should buy things constantly. I would love to buy your grenade and your weird artifact. That seems exciting. Uh, ooh, he has an engraved hypertractor. What is engraved on it? Uh, okay, that's, that's not a new story for us. Uh, we should definitely take the salve injector. We don't need the security card. Uh, do I want the silver nuggets? Do we have more value to compress into uh, smaller amounts of weight? I feel like we're actually... We've done a pretty good job of selling off a lot of our weighty stuff. Yeah, I definitely want the injector and the grenades, but we don't need these. We've done a good job of control. Actually, you know what? That's not true. We should take the silver nuggets in exchange for copper nuggets, right? This is still a compression of value. And that, I don't know why these are not stacking together. Here, we'll do it like this. All right, let's see what these artifacts are. Flashbang Mark II. Darn it, that's not the thing I wanted at all. And this is a Resonance Grenade Mark III. Okay, that's cool. It's not the thing I was most hoping it would be, but it's definitely a thing that, that is good. Huh, where do these these wires just run into the wall there? I wonder what is on the other side of that wall. 
I mean, that goes into the, sp uh, the spindle, right? Uh, tree is in the way. We are seeing lots of new kinds of trees around here, I feel like. Alright, that's the Tinker. And you are Zotham the Penitent. Ooh, fancy colored named sword. I assume that's supposed to be a big, like, Buster Blade style sword. As still as if he were hewn from the trunk of a tree, he stands vigil. He wears a cloak nearly as weathered as he, and gnarled hands grip on the hilt of a naked greatsword. Uh, okay. I mean, hey, you seem like an interesting character. Live and drink, Wayfarer. Cause no strife here, and we will have no quarrel. You sound like a warden. Oh, I am no warden. My only fellowship is with my own shame. Same, dude. Why, why are you ashamed? I was once a vile grave robber, the lowest of the low. Years ago, I sought to plunder the Tomb of the Eaters, and set off to do so with a pair of confederates. I watched both of them die, slain by ancient artifice and entombed with the ancient dead. I would have shared their fate but for a coterie of Mopango nesting in the catacombs. They kept me safe and fed me while I, while I treated my wounds. It is in their honor that I seek a credo now. Sorry, what's a Mopango? Mopango are plated, digging creatures whose armor scales glow a pale white. They are contemplative, sociable, and mostly peaceful. They commune with ancient objects, which is why a coterie of their kind lives in the Tomb of the Eaters. They are patient even with rough-hewn wanderers such as we, but it's still not best to ask one to explain Air Credo. Uh, you know, I think I'd like to meet these Mopango. Well, if you do find yourself in the tomb, the Mopango settlement is nestled in the wall of the Northwest Catacombs. The entrance is guarded by a chain turret named Vivira, brightly painted to distinguish him from Air Brethren. Resist your reflexive urge to fight or flee, as Vivira is friendly and open to parley. If you meet, tell him I sent you. Speak to a turret. Okay, I suppose I will. Live and drink. I'm acting like that's weird. I routinely ask walls politely to move aside. Okay, I'll, I'll do that. The Tomb of the Eaters uh, is obviously an important place based on its name. So these are just normal tombstones. Rest in peace, Ogon. Injected one shade oil injector too many. A assassinated after disparaging newly sentient beings. You gotta watch out for that. Choked on some conge congealed skulk. You guys gotta, you gotta stay off the skulk. Alright, are you Ezra? You are Ila Hodge. Spools of hair are bunched under the frustum of her habit. Her round cheeks are smeared with polyurethane and spindle dust, and her face is pulled low by the violence of her square jaw. Long, muscular forearms are tensed by the repeated pinching motion of tool manipulation. Her eyes are ultra-keen and shine bright cyan, and her vision smoothly segs between her work and her surroundings. Hated by the Merchant's Guild... Hated by Dromad merchants, but loved by the Daughters of Exile. Has some painted strange tubes. That's interesting. Traveler, put down your mangled trinkets and I'll repair them. Ah. Um, hold on a second. Live and drink. Uh, no. So if we water ritual with you, Dromad merchants and the Merchants Guild will not like that. Where am I at with those guys? I really, I'd prefer, obviously, not to go into hated with either of them uh dromad merchants feel okay probably it wouldn't be a big deal we'll be negative but not that negative uh and then uh the merchants guild they probably have some feelings about me already oh you know what it's not that bad though okay i will ritual with you let's do it your thirst is mine Okay, yeah, minus a hundred. That's not so bad. I do not wish to name my axe, no. Poison gas grenades, Mark II. We can learn repair. Okay. Nothing interesting. Tell me about this ancient village. Ezra sits in the shadow of history. Oh, Ezra's the name of the village. It's not the name of a person. Where small things grow. It's the moss beneath the statue, quite literally. For centuries, monarchs concerned themselves with felling trees. And now of the Covenant, only Ezra remains. It is home to Rebecca's gravesite, so for the daughters it is a sacred place. You may notice more of us on pilgrimage. 
okay, Rebecca, Rebecca was Reshef's wife, right? And who are you? She gives you a hard stare. I am a daughter of exile, but you should call me Ilahaj. A daughter of exile. Tinker nuns. The world sees fit to call us that, my sisters and me. Do you know the story told of Rebecca the Exile? She was a teacher to Reshef, but he excommunicated her from the Sultanate and banished her from the realm. To know her, I've chosen a life of unbelonging, and among my sisters I have the honor of permanent residence by her gravesite. I'll tell you this, Traveler. The shape of a society is visible only from the outside, and there is peace beyond a boundary. That's, uh, that's remarkably wise. So wait, wasn't Rebecca a healer? Why are you an order of tinkers? Um, you presume too narrow a meaning of health. God, that's... I love the way people think in this game. I know like, I'm always complimenting the writing, but I'm not just talking about the mechanics of the writing. I'm also talking about what they're writing about. So who's the man camped near the graveyard? Mm, Zotham. I don't see utility in unkindness, but he's a fool. Whereat that proximity to meekness made one meek. I have no use for a man who seeks salvation in the body of a dead woman. Huh, and what do you think of the plant you share this building with? I don't. Uh, pff, okay, fair enough. Am I allowed to trade with you? Yes, okay. As always, gotta go back to the root of the conversation. Sleep gas grenade, mark three. Damn it. I mean, it's still probably a good thing to learn, but damn it, also. Uh, a small stone, that's going to be a recoiler, right? I would not mind having a recoiler for this place. Alright, what do we want to trade you in exchange for this stuff? Uh, you cannot have my taco, I'm saving this taco. This is a very important taco. The cybernetics credit wedges are weightless, so in terms of compressing weight, it is definitely better to sell this stuff first. Uh, we still have a neck ring. Oh, I wonder if our baboon reputation is such that we could we could get it up with that neck ring. We should check. Uh, and then, what else? We have a couple of silver rondiers that are, I believe, one pound each. Uh, you know what? I'm going to sell these just to get them out of our inventory before I forget. Again. Which I did, obviously. Yeah, we don't really have a lot of, like... We don't have a ton of uh, a ton of garbage anymore, honestly. We've, we've compressed pretty well here. Uh, oh, you know what I don't need is this. That weighs a pound. And then, uh, honestly, I probably... I don't need the mercurial cloak. Oh, the sprayer brain. I don't need this stuff. Here, have one of these. Okay, let's see about that. I'm assuming that small stone is a recoiler for this place, which would be excellent. Yep, and as a recoiler. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. So, the stuff in here is just normal electronic stuff. A unit computer. Inside a metal chassis, amber glyphs ride the scan lines painted by a cathode ray. Frustum keys are arranged in quiet rows. I've seen the word frustum more in this game than I probably have in my entire life prior to playing this game. Ooh, a telescope. Alright, so there's nothing beyond Ezra. Like, the path does not continue through. I think we've spoken to, it seems like, all of the significant people. Maybe? Oh no, you seem significant. You might even be a warden based on your coloration. You are indeed. Warden 1FF, reprogrammed conservator. Do I have oil on me? I do. Uh, the villagers of Ezra liked that. The villagers of Shabimish did not so much. I don't care about them. I do not want to name my things. Oh, I have secrets to share with you. 210 reputation with the Fellowship of Wardens. We should go back to some villages. I might be able to push our fellowship rep up high enough that they can become our fourth favored faction. Uh, out of an oculus pours a scanning cone of mosaic light. It's unclear if they regard you as an interloper, but they take no aggressive action. Let's trade. This reprogrammed conservator has nothing to trade. I love this little garden. This is so cool. 
All right, I'm gonna steal those books. Oh, Indrix, you gotta get out of the way, buddy. And then he stole all the books. And then he stepped outside and he looked around for someone to spy from a distance to see if they had become hostile. And they had not, due to the excellent quality of the book thievery. Alright, so it, I think there might not be anything else for us to do here. We spoke to Asphodel. We certainly can't go inside. Hold on, the... Oh! There are other people here. Diplomacy droid. Delegate for the Fellowship of Wardens. What's up? Let's trade. He does not want to do that. Oh wait, did we... Delegate for apes. Did I did I go over the line? Are we cool now? Did we did we just make the fourth reputation? Yeah, apes. These are in fact the people who like us. So it does say the Fellowship of Wardens doesn't care about you. They do not favor us. Uh, are you ready to begin negotiations? We have the option of saying yes. We can also do the water ritual. Did I water ritual with you already? Hated by baboons. Baboons are not apes. Very important to note. That's a difference that has actual meaning here. But yeah, baboons already don't care for me. I'm in a water ritual. We are disliked by baboons. We are liked better by various types of plants. I would not like to name anything. I have secrets. I will give you all of these secrets. Okay, we're almost not negative with the Consortium of Fida. I guess I'm ready to start negotiating, my dude. Alright, so. I'm... <laughs> I'm nervous about invoking the Chaos Spiel. Uh, spare one faction of obligation by betraying a second faction and selling their secrets to Asphodel. We get a faction heirloom. I mean, that seems pretty fun. What are my factions? Apes? It's apes, wardens, the villagers of Shikalish. Hold on a second. Let me let me take my time to weigh the options here. Because I don't really want to lose all that rep with apes. We see a lot of apes out in the world. Uh, dogs are only 200. So it looks like... I wonder if the threshold for this quest is 200, while the threshold for the thing that tells you that people like you is... Uh, 250 or something. So I certainly don't want to take the big hit with Mechanimists either. Am I allowed to take it with dogs? Is that an option? No, nope, it would have to be... Well, it would be apes then, right? The thing is... Albino apes are the ones that are friendly. The tougher apes, the ogre apes, already are always hostile. So I guess this is the right option. And then plus 200 reputation and a faction heirloom with... I'm kind of thinking the Mechanimists, because if we had 200 more reputation with the Mechanimists, say we're at 346 with them right now, right? So we could already probably learn Proselytize. I'm going to go for the Fellowship of Wardens. The pact is struck. The Barathromites may lease control of the Spindle. Uh, we are now favored by the Fellowship of Wardens, and they gave us a painted weird artifact. And the de Delegate for Apes has problems with me. Yeah. Disliked by apes. You know, it happens. What is this cool weird artifact we were given? First of all, what's it painted with? A wandering around Ekashan and Tyrodek to the second stumbled upon a clan of grazing hedonists. Okay. Just a story. You know, just a totally normal story. The digital band of the 24th Minna. That didn't... That's no information. Oh, 10 electrical resist. It's a wrist-mounted force field emitter. That's actually a pretty handy thing. Grants you electrical generation at f level 5. That's cool. That's a thing we don't have yet. And this is... It's a force... F it's an armband. So... I'll just... Replace this. Yeah, we'll do that thing. And... I still have some radio-powered cells, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's throw one of those in there. That seems really useful. Thanks, Wardens. I do so love a Warden. Okay, where does this go? Oh, it just leads up to another gate into the spindle? The Life Gate? 
Palm leaves lift pyramids into a star ribbon sky, and water pours over the lip of an. Oh, okay, that's a word I'm not familiar with. It might be a it might be a made up cud word, but let's just go and look. It is not. It is not a made up cud word. Uh, it is a type of wine jug from the classical period of Greek pottery. Okay. If you thought, if somebody said Greek jug or Greek jar to you, this is the one you would think of. I think it's like that that really stereotypical jar uh, jug shape. Okay. Uh, lovers yoke across the frieze and goats chew copper cud on the cornices. I'm going to be honest with you. I like the other one better. I think the other one's got more personality. Not going to wander off into the jungle. Just trying to have a look around here. Just making sure there's not, like, people standing around that we could chat with or anything. Okay, well, this is going splendidly. Uh, so, I don't remember exactly when the Putus Templar attack occurs. It might be when we go back to Gridgate from here. So, I guess let's be ready for it. I feel pretty ready for it, to be perfectly honest with you. Uh, where are my recoilers? Oh, let's pull this cell. Throw in one of these. I do love the radio-powered cells. Uh, we probably don't need that to be full right now. Activate. I am, in fact, transported. Mafeo and Sparafusile have newly restocked inventories. Uh, let's have a quick chat with you. Thermal grenade. Okay, it looks like... None of the things that we might be looking for. And you... This is Hortensa. This is not even the person I was supposed to be talking to. Spare Fusile, my friend. Uh, data Disc, Sleep Gas Grenade Mark 1. Killing me. It's like it's intentional. Lantern. Well, I mean, we can guess what this does. It does only require Tinker 1. You know what? I will take that. And then Scaled, I don't really care about... A siphon baton. Ring magnets form a cylindric mace head to bash against objects and siphon their electron juice into a battery slotted on the shaft. That's a cool idea. Do not have the ability to build it. You know, I'm sure scaled only requires Tinker 1. Yeah, you know what, let's take it. Who knows, maybe at some point we'll decide we really care about having a lot of things that are scaled. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll really, really, really want to push up to a uh, decent rep with snakes or something. All right, uh, let's give you a little something extra. You know, we could afford to take on some water here. Uh, I will I will sell you a silver rondier and a jewel encrusted. Let's take the other one back. Here, we'll do that. Okay, and let's learn some grenades. Because I totally forgot to actually learn from this data disk. My guess is that the beta will not accept tier 3 uh, sleep gas grenades instead of the tier 2s, even though they are strictly better. Well, you would think that the Barathromites would want to get on repairing that. Hey, my dude, good news. The spindle is ours. It is sterling news, journey friend. I'll go inform Barathrum straight away. Uh, I swell with inspiration to name my boots. I decline. <laughs> oh, here it comes. It's time for this thing. The whole compound rumbles around you. The walls creak, loose objects skid about, and dust is stirred up in iridescent clouds. And Otho shouts for me, and the whole the whole world has shifted up into the right one tile, it feels like. Uh, we're actually just going to save and quit right here. I don't want to do the, uh, the whole event uh, in this video, because we're already running a little bit long. So we're just going to stop here for today. Thank you all so much for watching. If you will remember... The last time we did this event, it got a little squirrely, so we're going to try, when you come back next time, tomorrow, we're going to try to be very, very careful with how we engage, and we're going to try to maybe uh, save a few more lives than we did last time. It is going to be harder without Q-Girl around, and I'm super bummed out, by the way, still, about that having happened. Uh, will we pull it off? I guess you'll just have to come back tomorrow and see, and we'll see you then.